Hold on, I can't find the exact right spot because this game is dog shit. Hold on. Uh, there it is, apparently. Oh, they called the elevator. Yippee! I'm coming, I'm coming. Shot it out. Can't open the door for some reason. This game oh, they door jammed it, dude. We actually can't get in there. Wait, what? We actually can't get in. We have to go all the way around. Go around and see, I guess. Oh, wait, can they door jam this two doors? Oh, they could door jam. Yo, where's that guy at? Someone get the dev in the chat again. Yo, where's the dev at? Where's the dev at? Where's the dev at? All right, what's the counter? What's the counter? No shot. You can no shot. Hey, guys. Alucard here. Also known as an esports legend at asymmetrical games that no one plays. And today, this video is about doing the impossible. Saving an asymmetrical game from terrifyingly bad balancing. The game I'm talking about is Level Zero Extraction, and I'm about to show you and explain why the current path of balancing and not caring enough about the alien side is going to completely obliterate the game's future when it comes out. That's because without the alien side, you basically have a Fisher-Price version of Tarkov. My goal is to save this game from the doom of bad balancing, and I'm going to outline and explain exactly what those balance problems are, and hopefully I can help save the game from a deadly future. Now let's talk about one element of the game that has no counterplay, known as the door jammer. In this clip, you can see a surprise that literally nothing counters the door jammer except going all the way around. This might not seem too painful if we know the map very well, there happens to be an extract point in the basement of the C building that has literally one door as the entranceway and no other way in. So if someone were to door jam that, you actually have nothing you can do to prevent them from extracting. This is just one element of unacceptably bad game design. Every item and element in the game needs some aspect of fair balanced counterplay that can be performed from both sides. By the way, even if you could always go around somehow, that's still not really counterplay, that's just you having to do something because there's nothing else you can do. Situations with no counterplay lead us into a deeper problem with how they got through in the first place. This response that Lex wrote had to do with the EMP no longer affecting the flashlight, and thus Alien having no way to disable it. Two, yeah. This guy's gonna get it. There's literally nothing I can do. I'm just trying to distract him. Yeah, in there. Don't worry about the number of flashlights. They are not overpowered. Just use the scream and kill the Murkov from behind. Oh look, it looks like the mercenary has adapted after two days of the beta and realizes he can have his back to a wall or the extract elevator where I can no longer get behind him. There's definitely a major issue when the dev in charge of balancing claims to have 400 hours playing against quote strong players and that they solo wipe the entire server easily with that function. Although I have no idea how they would do that in the situation I was just in. This kind of thinking, that Alien is more OP than it actually is in reality, is exactly why Lex should definitely not be in charge of balancing. No offense. You know there what? We go. If there was oh, there's another light right there. there. Oh, now they're waiting to teabag me and kill me. Look at that. That's so fun. No, imagine if there was a, Dude, what about, about the solo the... Merc player? Yeah, the solo Merc player is gonna run... I literally can't do anything. Like, hey, join us, there's nothing I can do. Easy win. Yeah, like, they're all setting up right over here. They have, like, multiple light traps. You guys see this, right? There's also a flare in the vent, and that flamethrower can snipe you, apparently. Yeah. Now I want to take a look at another thing influencing bad balancing. In particular, it has to do with running a public poll that can actually impact balancing, but be voted on by very stupid people. Now you might be wondering what the definition is for a stupid person. Well, it's someone that overconfidently suggests the worst balance ideas you've ever heard, and is also completely wrong about how some aspects of the game actually work. Let's look at one example of how this person in particular is actually stupid. Here, they falsely claim that aliens can quote, one tap a turret. Let's look at some actual evidence that proves them wrong. By the way, evidence is something that you'll notice stupid people never seem to use.
As you can see, I hit the turret several times, and yet, somehow, it didn't get quote one tapped. And that's because this person's information is wrong, and they're really stupid. Interestingly enough, within 30 seconds of looking at their message history, I also saw yet another stupid statement, where they claim it's okay to feel like mercenaries have infinite flares because they quote, aren't cheap. But in fact, they are actually one of the cheapest items of all in the game. One of the major things plaguing the game's balance at the core is the game director's philosophy on balancing in general. And if you look closely, it's not too different from another game director we all know and love called Al Yang, who made Resident Evil Resistance. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how that balancing philosophy turned out for that game. Ah, it seems like it didn't turn out very well. In fact, it got so many negative reviews that the publisher chose to manually hide the page on Steam out of shame. But that was just Al Yang's first multiplayer game, so we should be fair. It's not like his second game could have done that bad. As you can see, having this Al Yang, or as I like to call it, Lex, philosophy on balancing, history might repeat itself again. The main issue with this kind of balancing philosophy is that these developers assume balance needs to be tweaked one way or another depending if you're a hardcore player or a casual player because they're worried about retaining their audience. First, I think it's important to define what a casual or beginner audience actually is. I think most people would define a casual player as someone who's new to the game or doesn't play it much, where they end up making a lot of what I like to call rookie mistakes, or they might be slow and inefficient at utilizing the game's mechanics. Personally, I think of a casual player as someone that's stoned all the time and smokes way too much weed before they start playing. When you're worried about beginners quitting the game, to such a degree that it affects your balancing, that's when you create unfair mechanics that can be abused by players with a lot of skill. Wait, wait, wait. Then I can play the game again. Hold on, where is he at? Hey, there he is. What's up, stupid? Oh, never mind, I'm dead instantly. There's a fire extinguisher was there. I guess he's dead too, though. <laughs> he did the tech, dude. They all learned the tech. If you crawl near a fire extinguisher, that's it. There's more waiting. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. What's important to remember is that it's okay to make your game more accessible to a casual audience. In other words, if you want to make mechanics easier to understand, you want to make a weapon easier to aim, you want to make objectives easier to reach. All of that is okay as long as the game is still fair at the core, which means that it shouldn't matter what skill level the player is who's utilizing these accessible mechanics. The whole thing about attempting to balance for beginners or low-level play leads us into our next major problem, which has to do with giving players way too much reaction time. If you give too much reaction time to a certain mechanic or element in the game, it completely negates it and makes it feel useless at any sort of high-level play. One current example of too much reaction time is how long it takes an alien to deactivate their invisibility. There's simply too much time between deactivating the ability, the mercenary is able to see you and react, and then finally being able to take another action. Another great example of giving players too much reaction time has to do with a lot of different demon attacks in Evil Dead the game, where attacks were so slow and could not be fainted that if survivors memorized the attack animations, they could always 100% dodge the move on reaction.
Well, golly, who could have seen that coming? Just like Resistance, Evil Dead the game became an unbalanced, asymmetrical trash can. If only those devs listened to me while there was still time. And with that, I think it's important to move on to achievable win conditions for both sides, and why it's important that no matter what level of gameplay you're at and how coordinated both teams are, as long as they're skilled enough, each side should always have a chance to win. An extremely worrying statement that Lex has made is that he doesn't seem to mind if you can never possibly prevent all the mercenaries from extracting as the alien. This philosophy is extremely frightening, because if they balance towards this, it means that Alien will have absolutely no chance of winning against skilled mercenary players, and the game will be dead on arrival. What you're about to see is my own personal interpretation of what I believe Lex must sound like whenever he's thinking about a complex balance decision. What? The alien's only getting three kills? No big deal, that sounds close enough. Yo, you know what I was thinking, everybody? Why not just shoot the alien with the robot over here? Hey, yo, get a load of this that next guy. My guy's got better stats than Tom Brady over here. Whoa, 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 I just solo wiped the lobbies easy. You know what I'm saying? One, two, three, scream, and they're dead. If we get into another situation where people that know what they're doing simply teabag and hold a game hostage by an extract elevator until they eventually leave, it doesn't feel like a win just because we killed a few mercenaries. And that's why this game might still be doomed if you keep allowing Lex to be in charge of balancing. No offense. Keep in mind that I'm not saying that aliens should win every match. I'm saying they should have a chance to win every match if they play well enough. And winning in this game definitely seems to be linked to not letting any mercenaries extract, because it doesn't feel like you won if a mercenary is talking shit to you in proximity chat as they extract on an elevator. Aliens need an actual chance to prevent any mercenaries from extracting. They need to feel like if they work well together and outplay their opponents or trick them, that they can in fact accomplish that. The best selling point for this game is the aliens, so if you make it trivial or feel like they're just going to get bullied as soon as people know what they're doing, then this game's going to die. Oh, B's not active, so but they're moving now. They're throwing million flares in the way. So I can't seem to... So we got targeted that one. Oh, they almost hit me with a fucking weapon I've never even seen before. <laughs> I see another target here, hitting it. So. <laughs> this game is the worst piece of trash ever made. I think he's down, but this is the worst piece of trash. This he's is the down. worst game ever made, I'm sorry, I have to say that. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you like this video, make sure to like, follow, subscribe, and all that other stuff that other every other guy tells you to do. See you later.